Hi, now we're going to talk about serious stuff, something that you have demanded in comments below our previous videos. We're going hard and fast, we're going to play realistic battles mode in War Thunder. This is but a mere entry into the series of tutorials dedicated to realistic battles. In this video, you will learn basic recommendations on how to properly play this mode and what is different from the regular arcade aviation battles. As you are probably aware, the arcade mode is a fan favorite that is simple, dynamic and fast. You just click once and you're in battle. The realistic mode, on the other hand, is a close simulation of real-life aerial combat. Here, you only get one aircraft, one chance. The mission begins at the airfield that you must take off from. Then, you need to fly towards your target, which is not a long distance, mind you, then you engage the enemy in the skies. Why is this mode so beloved by some of the players if it looks so difficult and slow to the eyes of the arcade player? First off, it's the flight physics and the damage model in it. In arcade mode, your plane will never fall to pieces due to extreme G overloads, it can turn using just its tail, it can take so much punishment that it puts B-17 to shame and it barely ever overheats. In realistic mode, all these things will be an issue. Even the oil and water temperature of your engine matters now. Even the climate of the map makes a difference, which you will soon see when playing Sicily after the Ardennes. The map themselves are scale copies of actual battlegrounds. Players that wage war in Kuban will see the beautiful Russian city of Novorossiysk and those who have visited Germany will immediately recognize Tempelhof Airport while playing in Berlin. We can go on at great lengths about historical accuracy, so let's do it some other time. The game also has missions from alternative history where nations that never fought in real life wage a fierce war against each other. There, the USA goes against the USSR or the UK. But if you don't like such historical liberties, we can offer you special missions held in the events mode. There, you can only use aircraft that actually did battle in the given part of the World War II depicted in a respective mission. Whether it's Malta or Sicily or just a routine L2 escort mission. But let's get back to combat. Bombers start the game airborne in realistic mode, while fighters and attack aircraft have to take off from the airfield. Here, you will meet your first obstacles. Until you get enough speed to take off, do not ever retract your landing gear or you might crash before taking off. Better yet, just forget about them for the time being because by default the landing gear will retract itself when you're safely off the ground and gain enough altitude. And don't fidget the plane around much before you gain enough altitude or you risk crashing. There are also things you must know about landing, for that we recommend you train a little in the training section because in realistic mode these skills are very important. Ok, we're in the air. Check all the temperature readouts, fuel and ammo in the interface panel. We also recommend you set up the speed to its true indicator, use IAS instead of SPD, because SPD is your speed relative to the ground, whereas IAS is your speed versus the incoming airstream. This option is better because the airstream determines the overall aerodynamic qualities of your machine and allows you to perform certain maneuvers relative to the speed of your craft. If your speed is too high, you risk breaking the plane's fuselage against the airstream. If your speed is too low, your craft might stall. For those of you who want a demonstration, here it is. First, climb to 23,000 feet or 7,000 meters. Then, speed up to 190 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour relative to the ground and try and pull a full loop. Oh, you can't? Then switch your speed indicator to true speed and you will see what your speed actually is. All the questions should be answered now. Now let's talk altitude. There is an optimal altitude for each plane where it performs best. For example, the Germans fuel well at 4 to 5,000 meters where Soviet aircraft are much better at 3,000 meters. But you have to understand, this is a very broad categorization, so you should test each aircraft and see for yourself. Ok, we have covered the speed and altitude. What's next? Oh yeah, shooting! There is no lead marker in the realistic mode and the ammo does not replenish in mid-air. You will have to fire accurately in short bursts only. If your weapon jams due to overheating, only ground service will be able to unjam it. If you are experienced in arcade mode, just imagine where a lead marker could be at the given moment and fire. 
and you are likely to hit your target. If you are unsure, then take more lead than you wanted before. At least your opponent might hit your burst on his way forward, rather than your shots just going past him. When your ammo runs out, which it most definitely will, it is time to go back to the airfield. There, your mechanics will fix, refuel and rearm your aircraft. Here, even fuel is not infinite. After that, you are clear for takeoff. Do you remember our recommendation to add fuel indicators to the interface panel? This might save your life someday. The regular indicator turns red only when you have 2 minutes worth of fuel left. Now imagine this, you are fighting in Spain and your indicator turns red. 2 minutes left and you need 7 minutes to get back to the airfield. Low fuel situations like this are not always the case, it's just the game map of Spain is rather large. Nevertheless, 2 minutes out and your mighty Messerschmitt is feeding fishes in the deep waters of the Mediterranean Sea. During the battle itself, take care and watch your speed and G overloads. Any sudden movement and you might lose an important part of your plane, such as a wing or two. Also mind the speed while diving, because you can damage your plane or enter a flutter if you exceed the maximum speed of your respective aircraft. The speed of your plane also affects its controls. If you're going too fast, your elevators might jam or flaps can fall off too. These are but a handful of possible troubles you might encounter if your piloting is not careful. The path to excellence lies in knowing each aircraft, its advantages and physical limitations as well. But we can still offer you some general advice on maneuvering though. First of all, use all available controls. Pitching, roll and yaw are not just fancy words. Secondly, in an active combat environment, maneuver with your keyboard. Use your mouse only when you want to open fire. Then disable the instructor in the controls tab, because this option seriously limits your piloting and does not allow you to take risks, which can actually do you a bad service and kill you in battle. Use your flaps more often. The landing mode is effective to stay aloft at low speeds. Lost all your energy during a tail slide? Extend the flaps to landing mode, hold the negative pitch and then correct your course with positive pitch if required. This is how you can salvage your position if your plane is about to stall. The flaps extended in landing mode are not always useful in a fight because your plane will lose too much energy and speed. This is where the combat mode of your flaps comes in. By default, the fast switching between combat and retracted modes is set to F key. If you wish to extend or retract your flaps, use the square brackets. We will talk more about flaps in future videos as it is a precise tool and requires more time, not to mention that flaps might behave differently in various craft. The last thing we want to talk about today is damage. In the damage model lies the heart of the realistic mode. Any damage to your craft will affect its performance depending on the severity of the set damage. If one of your wings is pierced, then your plane will begin to bank on its own. The harder your wing is hit, the more of that banking you will experience. If your tail is busted, then you are likely to fall into a spin, whereas a leaking oil tank might eventually jam your engine. In any case, if you feel that you got hit hard, your best bet is to fall back to the airfield and repair. Better to wait for a repair and then return to battle, rather than crash into ground and become a spectator. Do not be afraid of the realistic mode. In our opinion, it is the richest and the best mode for air combat in War Thunder. Many things that are considered an issue for a rookie can be real assets for an experienced fighter here. You will learn fast, trust me. Our tutorials are now moving on to the realistic mode. Though we will still go back to arcade from time to time and of course we will talk about the simulator mode as well. Subscribe to our channel and never miss another video again. We're just getting started. Good luck.